स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया from the yesterday class if you can uh, uh, see we have tried to develop a uh, discuss about uh, the flat jack method uh, with the use of that uh, we can find out uh, the stresses which will uh, which is acting normal to the plane of slot and uh, for each uh, orientation we can find one of the a uh, component of a stress tensor and uh, this is going to help us to find out the complete stress tensor at a point okay, so so uh, yesterday we have seen that uh, uh, a flat jack is being inserted and uh, the pump pressure is being applied and uh, there was uh, some uh, uh, orientational issue of this uh, slot was there uh, so i have made a change uh, of that so now uh, with this orientation of slot at three different orientations we can find out the three prim principal stresses uh, yesterday i had also given an assignment uh, uh, and the question was uh, to uh, how many tests are required and the question was the limitations the question was with the limitation of the flat jack test and uh, one was uh, the limitations i told that uh, the surface is being created the slot is being created right at the uh, surface uh, of uh, the wall uh, okay so uh, the uh, the thing is uh, the problem will come from there itself um and another problem uh, i was i had asked you regarding uh, with the uh, uh, the number of test how many tests are required uh, the to find out uh, uh, the stress tensor so after uh, the acceptance of this method uh, as a uh, as a method a reliable method to some extent uh, some other methods have also come up and whatever the limitations was there with this uh, uh, method was uh, tried to uh, resolve it and in those cases those uh, the, this this is some of the major uh, uh, limitations was there in the flat jack technique and uh, it has been tried some other methods are there which we will uh, come across with and we will see that uh, those uh, limitations have been taken care by the other methods as well Uh, in a very better way and we will uh, discuss now okay so as far as uh, you can see this problem uh, a simple problem i am just talking about uh, from your last uh, class and uh, here uh, I, in this figure i am trying to show you uh, a tunnel a vertical section of a tunnel and uh, and you can see a center line of this tunnel is defined by this dotted uh, lines and uh, you can see this inclination of this tunnel with horizontal is 7 degree okay some inclination is there right and uh, uh, and i'm just placing a, a coordinate system coordinate uh, cartesian coordinate system y is with the along the direction of the gravity and x is um, uh, perpendicular to this direction of the gravity okay and uh, we have the third uh, orientation is also the x y z no? so we are talking about a plane x y in which uh, uh, we can have uh, uh, the the vertical section of this tunnel in which we can see the three locations a b and c and as at three locations we have uh, three slots are being created 1 2 and 3 okay so uh, in this figure we are trying to see a plane xy plane uh, uh, in which three slots have been created okay so uh, now you will see uh, once i am doing this experiment for the three uh, different slots we will get three different values of uh, pressure hmm. or uh, that pressure we can call it a cancellation pressure okay the pressure which is required to uh to to again uh, uh, to sending uh, uh, to make the uh, distance between the pin 
uh, to its original positions, right? So that's why we are calling it a cancellation pressure. So for each of the flat jacks test at A, point A, B, and C, we have three uh, different uh, uh, stresses we have determined. Stresses which is normal in nature and which is acting perpendicular to the plane. This is very, very important. Uh, so those stresses are acting perpendicular to the plane, right? So the direction of a stress, if I'm trying to show in this figure again, it, not, it will not be a bad idea to show you that uh, the direction of this stress will be will be maybe I'm showing you for this only or only one and for others you can understand by yourself that uh, what will be the direction of uh, these stresses, right? So, so we can see that on point A, at point B, the cancellation pressure will be uh, will be oriented along uh, this. Uh, maybe I can change the color. So for each of them, this cancellation pressure direction will be like this. No? So for each of the locations, for each of the locations we can have. So you can see the direction of the cancellation pressure at point B, at uh, uh, test location B. Similarly for test location A, the cancellation pressure direction, although this uh, direction of your slot is something uh, different, but the direction of your cancellation is different, right? So uh, with this direction, this direction is very, very important. So that's why in this problem it is mentioned that the tunnel is inclined at an angle of 7 degree. Some inclination is there with the horizontal axis. Um, and uh, uh, we are measuring, the measurement is taking place almost 300 meter below the ground surface. Okay. And uh, it is assumed that uh, the flat jacks are in the same stress field. This assumption is important here because we are assuming that uh, between point A, B and C, the stress variation is not there. Hmm. So almost they are in the same stress field. Okay, so the stress tensor, if I'm so able to find So your voice out, is sounding distorted. Oh, is it so? Excuse me, sir. Yeah, it is not clear. Sir, your voice is sounding distorted. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Let, me, uh, let me be clear. So now, now it is okay. Now it's okay. Voice is clear. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, now you can see in this figure that uh, uh, whatever we have discussed in uh, yesterday's class, you can see the uh, direction of your flat jacks. Uh, the direction, the slot direction is defined with respect to the direction of uh, the 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 center line of uh, the tunnel and it is defined at 40 degree with the uh, in anti clockwise direction uh, in not anti clock it is in clockwise direction at a at a degree of uh, 40 degree right similarly it is defined that the slot b is created along the uh, uh, along the direction of uh, the tunnel or along the direction of your uh, center line right similarly a slot c is being created which is uh, inclined at an angle of uh, 52 degree uh, with the center line uh, in uh, anti-clockwise directions. Okay, so this direction is defined as far as the slot is created. Right? Slot uh, in the tunnel has been created on one of the faces. Okay, then you can see uh, in the next line it is written that the cancellation pressure for each location is uh, this much: 7.56 megapascal, 6.72 megapascal. Uh, and 7.5 megapascal. So it is different at three different locations. It may be possible that uh, the stress at uh, three locations can be same. Or uh, so that will be another state of stress. Or maybe uh, it is equal for two of them different for others. So anything is possible. So uh, I am uh, giving this data for uh, one of the situations where all the three values are uh, different. The cancellation pressures are different. And it is a very important assumption that 
uh, and we are trying to make all these three points very close so that our assumptions about uh, uh, the flat jack uh, lying in the same stress field should uh, be um, as uh, should be a conformity to that now so if the, these points are very close to each other so um, because we have to test uh, more uh, tests maybe six nine tests we have to conduct to get the complete stress tensor right so in those situations uh, because creating a slot close to each other always not possible as far as this uh, limitation of this method is concerned so uh, we had also we uh, that we will try to do as close as possible huh? so that uh, the stress field should not vary so that's why we are assuming that and these points are in such a uh, location at the point and they are not wide apart from each other and assume that these uh, they are lying in the same stress field right? comparison to the scale which we are talking uh, as far as the earth is concerned and the the distance of each other between each other is not uh, is very very less right? so that assumption is very very valid now the question is we can we can find it out uh, the principal stresses hmm. or we can find find it out the uh, uh, the principal stresses and their directions and we we can also find out whether it is with the uh, accordance with the worldwide trend or not whether the stress field at this point is as per the worldwide trend or not so what is the worldwide trend we have seen yesterday in our uh, 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 vertical stress plot and the uh, horizontal stress uh, plot uh, the trend around the world the vertical stress plot is sigma v is uh, Uh, gamma h or rho g h uh, linearly increasing from the surface, and uh, uh, and similarly for horizontal stress we we have seen that sometimes it is less than uh, vertical stress, sometimes it is more than a vertical stress. So that type of inferences we can draw from uh, the uh, solution of this problem. Okay, <clears throat> it is also mentioned that uh, because uh, to measure this vertical stress we need to have the uh, uh, the density. and uh, here this data is given at this location the average density of overlying rock overlying rock means means what the rock layers which is above this point so uh, the rock density of overlying rock is 2250 kg per meter cube right so this is the uh, in information which is given um, uh, to us uh, 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 to find out uh, what is the value of your principal stress okay so uh, what is the uh, advantage of this uh, principal stress uh, what we are talking while we are why why we are talking about the principal stress because it is uh, independent of uh, uh, the shear stresses if you, because the plane on which we are trying to find out the principal stresses that will be free from the shear stresses but if it is not a principal plane then uh, there will be two stresses uh, will be there of uh, 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 and uh, that will be uh, uh, the normal stress and the shear stress will be there and if it is a principal stress so only normal stresses will acting on that okay so now uh, this uh, what information is given to us we we have we know the stress normal stress at point a b and c okay uh, that is uh, coming in terms of a cancellation pressure we are also calling it a cancellation pressure by a flat jack technique and we have determined the uh, sigma a sigma b and sigma c okay you can call it a sigma a sigma b and sigma c now come to the my next slide now uh, i have tried to find out uh, so okay so the important relationships we uh, we have to uh, see at this point of time we can derive uh, i think uh, you have uh, uh, have you gone through the stress transformation relationships i hope uh, uh, you might have gone through your solid mechanics also that um, if uh, a sigma x and sigma y is acting on a plane and tau xy as uh, on a 2d plane if sigma x sigma y and uh, tau xy is acting on a plane we can find it out what is the value of a stress normal stress and shear stress at an angle some theta okay so the same relations we are uh, Uh, uh using at this uh, uh point to solve this problem okay so for any any uh, 2d plane uh, the three unknowns will be there that is uh, your sigma uh, sigma x sigma y and tau x
No, so before we are going to be, uh, before we solve this problem, the the uh, the thing which is impo important to determine uh, is the direction of your cancellation pressure. No? Uh, cancellation, the direction in which uh, we are applying the cancellation pressure with respect to the Cartesian coordinate, which is uh, attached with this tunnel. Okay. So, uh, so that's why uh, the conventions, the sign convention is very, very important for us to follow here. We are assuming that the anti-clockwise is positive and uh, the clockwise is negative, right? So that conventions we are going to follow to find out possibly the angle of inclination of the cancellation pressure at each location, A, B, and C, right? So now so let us start with uh, point A. Point A, you can see. Uh, if I can define it, uh, the inclination of cancellation pressure at point A by theta A. So I can write uh, minus seven for the inclination of uh, the tunnel axis with respect to the reference. It is uh, clockwise minus seven. Then inclination of uh, the, the slot, that is minus 40. And then we have the 90 degree will be the inclination of the, uh, the, the uh, cancellation pressure with respect to the slot, right? So if you are adding this, so final inclination of uh, the cancellation pressure is 43 degree. This is very important. And uh, uh, most of the people are making this the mistake of uh, getting this cancellation pressure. Sometimes uh, the students are directly getting uh, using this 40 degree uh, to calculate uh, the stresses, right? So that is wrong, uh, okay? So I just want to tell you the direction of the slot is not the direction of the, uh, the stress which is acting on that plane, slot plane. The direction of uh, the stress which is acting uh, at point A or the slot A uh, is, uh, is perpendicular to the direction of the slot, right? So it is important to find out the direction of uh, the stress which is acting at that point. Hmm? Uh, so the this uh, so what we are trying to find we are trying to find out the direction of the uh, the, the direction uh, uh, of the stress which is normal to this uh, slot. Okay, normal to the plane which has been created by slot. So this can easily be found by by minus seven because it is uh, anti-clockwise minus seven. And uh, this direction is minus uh, 40. And then we have a stress orientation. Now, stress orientation is at some 90 degree with this slot. So we are adding this value. So finally, we are getting so with. Why we had 90 degrees? Sir. Why we had at 90 degrees? Sir? Yeah. So this is what I am trying to tell you. And uh, 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 let us uh, go to point B, right? Now, point B, I have added the direction, this uh, with uh, blue arrows. This is showing you the direction of your cancellation uh, pressure or the direction from which the stress is acting. That's why from yesterday class itself, I'm trying to press upon this point that the stress is acting perpendicular to the plane of slot acting on the plane or the direction of your stress is perpendicular to the direction of the slot. So slot direction is what? Slot direction is your, this line, okay? If I can take, uh, if I can make a different color, then it is also not bad. If you can take it uh, something red, so you can make it red. Okay, so what we are doing here, we are, our aim is to find the direction of the stress because we are interested in stress, not the direction of the slot. We are testing within the slot and we are canceling this stress, which is lying perpendicular to the direction of the slot. Are you getting? Sir, cancellation yes, pressure yes, is sir. acting yes, downwards or upwards? Cancellation pressure is acting towards, uh, it is uh, resulting into failure of the body. Okay, so cancellation pressure is looking upward. No, so it is action and reaction. Cancellation okay. pressure, we are act, uh, it is acting from your uh, flat jet towards the uh, towards the uh, slot. Okay, so both are uh, both stresses are uh, just action and reaction. 
okay the pressure which we are generating into the flat jack that is cancelling the stress which is uh, being acted upon by the uh, by the in situ stress okay so either we can uh, uh, show the direct so cancellation uh, pressure will be the opposite to what it is shown over here are you getting this direction i am showing you this red uh, red arrow it is showing you the direction of your in situ stress okay so cancellation pressure what i am talking about it will be opposite to that and the magnitude wise both will be same okay yes, sir. okay so this is okay so under the impression of these stresses our deformation is taking place and we are cancelling it okay so that's why we want to find out the direction of this stress what is the orientation now uh, with respect to your uh, horizontal axis okay and that's why uh, that's why we are trying to find out for the slot b uh, it because it is uh, uh, in uh, along the direction of the tunnel itself so uh, the inclination of the tunnel plus 90 degree will be added so this total angle will be 83 degree with respect to your axis so this way we are finding uh, the inclination of the uh, inclination of the stress or the cancellation pressure on each uh, uh, on each uh, yeah, uh, on each uh, uh, slot right it's okay for everybody yes sir this, this is the point people are getting uh, uh, con uh, getting some uh, queries and once it is done so this problem is solved now okay so now if it is clear with you so now this is the direction of your cancellation pressure which is acting at this point and we are trying to uh, find out the direction of this uh, uh, this direction of your stress right so this will be the direction of your uh, stress right so uh, uh, 43 degree for uh, uh, and, uh, for point uh, location a uh, uh, 83 degree for uh, location b and 135 degree for location c right then we have uh, the equation for this transformation equations is there if we know at any point sigma x sigma y and tau xy we can find out the sigma theta at uh, uh, we can find out the sigma theta means normal stress at angle theta uh, under the uh, action of the sigma x sigma y and sigma uh, tau xy right so this will be the relations we can use possibly you have gone through your solid mechanics so the same formula you have uh, used in that case right so uh, only the sign conventions will be there here we are using sigma x to be uh, um, towards the body this is positive stress we are taking and uh, negative is your uh, 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 away from the body that is your tensile and uh, which is otherwise opposite in case of engineering uh, or the solid mechanics whatever you have studied similarly for tau xy if it is uh, positive it means that it is acting in anti clockwise it is trying to rotate the body in anti clockwise so it is positive and uh, if tau xy is negative it means that it is in the our direction is uh, clockwise direction okay similarly we have the uh, tau theta at uh, theta will be so we can use this relation now you can see in uh, this xy coordinate system we do not know sigma x sigma y and tau xy so because uh, the, so the, this is the reason if i am trying to find out and you can see in this equation how many uh, dependent and independent parameters are there sigma th theta is dependent on sigma x sigma y tau xy and theta okay if you, if i want to find out sigma theta we need to know sigma x sigma y uh, tau xy and theta right and uh, but in this case in this particular problem what is known to us we know the orientation the theta is known to us what is the orientation of the stress at each location and uh, uh, we know the cancellation pressure at a certain angle at certain angle so we know sigma theta we know sigma theta and we know uh, theta okay only two things are known uh, from this uh, uh, flat jack technique so we know theta sigma theta and we know only theta okay so for each locations we can write this equation okay for each equation for like say for example sigma theta a 
this is your cancellation pressure at point a okay so we can write like this this second stage we can write use this equation sigma theta a is equal to sigma x cos square 43 degree plus sigma y sin square 43 degree and twice of tau x y sin 43 and cos of 43 right so we can write because this is a normal stress which is acting at each of the points so we have the three equations and three equations are there three unknowns are there and the solutions of uh, uh, these uh, equations is going to be the unknown uh, uh, unknown uh, uh, sigma x sigma y and tau x y at the uh, in this particular plane okay so this is what so we can express this equation in a matrix form where uh, sigma theta a please keep yourself mute Okay, so you can see uh, in this equation, you can see uh, we have uh, uh, this equation. We can write in terms of a matrix form where theta sigma theta a is 7.56 megapascal, uh, sigma theta b is 6.72 megapascal, and sigma theta c is your 7.5 megapascal. And uh, uh, this three by three matrix consists of others, and these are the three unknowns we have: sigma x, sigma y. If I will uh, take inverse of uh, that, uh, the sigma this, sigma x, sigma y, tau x, y will be R inverse of uh, sigma of jack. Uh, we are uh, de denoting by a sigma jack. Jack means uh, jack pressure. No? So, uh, so our uh, uh, when we will take inverse of that, uh, we have the sigma x, sigma y, and tau x, y will be uh, this. This will be the value. So, sigma x, sigma y, tau x, y will be. Uh, 8.308, 6.698, and 0.002 megapascal. So we'll find it out uh, in this particular plane. Uh, Sahar, uh, yeah. yeah, please. Uh, tell so me. how did you get the value of uh, sig sigma theta a, sigma theta b, and sigma theta c? How, so how did you get that value? Yeah. So this is what we uh, yesterday uh, class you were there. Yesterday class you had attended. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, then uh, yes, uh, so we had the done... connection was very bad. So okay, I'm, I'm yeah. missing. Okay, so uh, okay, so we have to go in detail. Yesterday video is already uploaded, so you go through that. Uh, we have conducted. I had explained you a method called flat jack technique, and in this flat jack technique, we did this experiment at uh, three locations. Okay, I'm not going in much detail. Otherwise, I have to repeat the same class again. So I am just in a short. I am telling you that for each location, we did one experiment. Okay, and uh, with this experiment, we have tried to find out uh, the pressure which is required to uh, to cancel the uh, in situ stress. Just you just remember this much, and uh, this is what we we have determined from one experiment. Okay. So this way we are determining sigma theta a, b, and c at three different locations. So this value is the experimental data, which we are conducting in a uh, uh, at a uh, in 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 site on site on site experiments, right? Maybe in a tunnel or maybe some uh, uh, below surface some excavation is happening. We are doing this experiment uh, on site itself. Is it okay for you now? So this value is given to you. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So to get a more detail about this test, how we have actually find it out, uh, the video is already there. You please go through that, and uh, if some specific questions will be there, I will uh, we will try to solve it. Right. Okay. So please follow the yesterday's video. Now that will help you a lot. So uh, by uh, getting, so yes, I sir. think. Type of questions is okay because many of you are not uh, able to follow possibly yesterday, so maybe such type of fillers will be good for us to get into the uh, to understand this problem, right? So we have this sigma 7.56. This value is uh, known from the on-site experiments we conducted in the uh, uh, at uh, this tunnel site. So this value is given to us. So we have to conduct this experiment, right? And while we are conducting this experiment. And that's why, um, uh, while conducting this experiment, uh, we we got this value, and we are also trying to we are also fixing this angle. 
okay because all the angles are known to us uh, we are determining these angles with respect to a coordinate system now if some let say for example if your coordinate system is also now they, this is an interesting problem again now if i am uh, not willing uh, some of you may not be, uh, is not willing to attach the coordinate system the way i am showing over here right maybe you are not interested in that so maybe i can make this x axis along the direction of the curve so it is 7 degree uh, will be now zero and in that uh, situation also uh, your 7 will be zero and sigma theta a will be something else uh, it will be 50 degree and when once you will solve it so you can your your uh, your uh, what is called uh, the coordinate system will be along this direction and will be something else and uh, you can have the sigma x sigma y and tau x y in that particular orientation of your coordinate system right so it all depends upon the coordinate system whatever you are choosing here i have taken this y and x y is along the direction of the gravity as i told you earlier and x is just the perpendicular direction so you have a choice you can take this xy uh, because yeah. Uh, sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z. Sigma z. So yes. So it will be mentioning in the question, but for it is mentioning in the question. Now I'm I'm talking about the different options we have. Uh, we have uh, options that uh, we can change the orientation of your Cartesian coordinate also. It is not a uh, hard and fast rule that you have to keep x and y in the particular look, uh, direction whatever is shown in the slide right so you can take any of them but if you are trying to find out the principal stress that will remain same whatever it will be independent of your cartesian coordinate system right so the whatever the question is asked you know, whatever the question is asked uh, the problem what we are solving here if you are not uh, fixing the coordinate system you are not fixing the coordinates uh, if you are uh, taking a different coordinate system also but this end results will remain same okay because your principal stress will be depend independent of your uh, coordinate system okay okay so this is what i am trying to apprise you okay and possibly you might have solved such type of problem in so solid mechanics also but here we are talking in a different uh, applications okay so here with this uh, coordinate system we can find out The sigma x x, sigma x x, sigma y y, and tau x. What does it mean? What does it mean? Uh, the sigma x x, sigma y y, and tau x y. If I can uh, draw this plane in a very simple way, like x y plane, so I can simply say that sigma x is nothing but sigma x is nothing but a, a stress which is acting along. the direction of your x axis right there will be a stress which is acting in the direction of y axis okay so similar uh, similarly we can uh, apply on the other axes also without any getting getting confusion so on all the surfaces you can have this stresses so we have a two dimensional space on a surface this stress will act hmm. similarly this will also there will be a because uh, this is a, a positive so we can have this uh, this one and we can have the horizontal stresses we can oh, uh, okay. okay so finally what we are getting we are getting all the stresses on this two dimensional uh, plane okay what we are determining so this is sigma x x sigma y y and tau x y so this is what the answer we are getting over here okay now if uh, the now the question is talking about because once we know the sigma x sigma y and sigma xy we can easily find out the values of sigma 1 sigma 3 uh, may uh, the principal stresses and its orientation okay 
Now, uh, what is the inference? So far, what the inference will, whatever we have uh, discussed so far, uh, uh, the same thing uh, we can, uh, I think it is written over here, three tests needed to find three stress tensor in a plane. Okay, so uh, for a plane, if I'm interested to find out the stress, we need to have uh, three sets of tests. To find the complete stress tensor, you can see the stress tensor is given at any point uh, within the uh, body. Uh, but to find out the complete stress tensor, uh, complete stress at a point, we need to have this nine uh, uh, value of uh, stresses we have to find. Out of that, three are the normal stresses and uh, six are the shear stresses. Okay, so total nine stresses we have to find at a particular uh, point within the bodies. Okay, so to find out the complete, to find out the complete stress tensor in 3D field. Uh, uh, maybe other planes, y, z, and z, x, uh, we have to have maybe three plus three plus three uh, set of means total nine tests we have to conduct. But uh, while uh, going through the symmetry of this uh, uh, curve, these slots, we will find that uh, some of them are now uh, same. Mm. Instead of the same slot is being repeated in y, z plane or the same slot is being repeated in z, x plane, so there is no need to go for a nine test as such. Okay, so the number of tests will come down to six, I think, right? So the number of tests we can cut down to six rather than the nine. But uh, but that is the minimum number of tests we have to conduct. But as the number of tests will be more and more, it will be good to give you the average value and uh, the average stress at the at a particular location, right? So similarly, if I'm going to conduct the same test in a YZ plane, so we'll find sigma YY, sigma ZZ, and tau YZ. Similarly, if I'm doing for ZX plane, we'll find out uh, sigma ZZ and sigma XX and uh, sigma ZX. Uh, okay, so you can see that in XY plane, we are getting XX and sigma YY. Again, in YZ plane, we are getting sigma YY and sigma ZZ. So the same value of stress uh, we are doing at uh, in these two different planes. Okay, so that test we can. Uh, if we will talk about the minimum number of tests, so there is no need to uh, repeat the test in the two plane. Okay, so here if I have conducted three player uh, uh, flat jack tests, so here we can ignore the test which we are conducting to find sigma y y. Okay, we can use the same result to find out these things also, right? So here we can cut down the sigma yy. So we are left with sigma zz and uh, sigma uh, tau yz. So only two slot is going to give you another two values. Okay. So three slots here, two slots here. Okay. Because sigma yy we have already determined in uh, while doing uh, test in xy plane. Okay. Now when we will talk about the zx plane, you will see sigma zz is not known, uh, sigma z is already determined in yz plane, sigma xx is already determined in your this plane, only zx is not known, to, not known to us. Okay, so out of these three tests, if you can conduct only one test in zx plane, so what will happen? We will find uh, uh, the uh, stress tensor, complete uh, stress tensor, right? Uh, so here, three tests in xy plane, here two tests in yz plane and here uh, only one test in zx plane so that is good enough only six test is going to give you the complete stress stress, uh, stress uh, tensor okay and it is uh, needless to mention to all of you that uh, these uh, because of uh, the equilibrium conditions we are assuming that tau xy and tau yx is same and uh, tau xz and tau, tau zx is same and tau yz and tau zy is same. So we are end with finding out these six parameters of the matrix that is good enough to find out the complete stress at a point. So uh, uh, in total, instead of going with minimum number of tests required to find out, so that was the, uh, the questions I had asked you, the minimum number of tests which is required to determine a stress tensor at a point will be, may, many of you will agree with only six minimum. Okay, And there is no limitation of maximum. Na? So minimum number will be six. So only six tests is, not only, six tests is required to get a complete, minimum six tests is required to get the 
the complete stress tensor at a point. I hope some of you have got the right answer and uh, maybe some of you have uh, did some problem in your assignment uh, answer. No? So our final answer will be a six test is required, minimum six test is required to get the complete stress tensor at a point, right? So this will be the solutions for, for today. Uh, so same thing uh, I have tried to show over here. Some of the problems are again repeated here um, uh, about the flat jack. Okay, L like uh, uh, like the, in this problem, instead of as I told you, minimum test requirement in a two-dimensional plane also it is three only, right? Minimum so that we can solve this uh, 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 three equations to get uh, uh, three unknowns, right? But if you are going to get uh, uh, the more than three test that will be good to get the average value of stresses now in this problem two uh, instead of three we have tried to solve the five uh, flat jack test have been carried out in a particular location so apart from this three test another two tests have been carried out where uh, uh, the deep of uh, uh, the tunnel uh, the flat jack has been made in the wall of the tunnel considered in front these dips at uh, 20 degree and 90 degree anti-clockwise relative to the tunnel axis. The uh, orientation of the slot is 20 degree and 90 degree with respect to the tunnel axis. And the cancellation pressure is like this. Okay. So uh, we can solve the same problem and we will get the uh, best fit uh, or the average value of stresses um, out of that. And we will solve the same matrices. Uh, so a sigma jack will be five values. Then your R matrix will be uh, five by uh, three matrix, and then uh, sigma global will be sigma uh, this like this. No? So we are uh, solving this problem, and we'll get the, the average value of stresses out of the five tests. So you can increase. There is no limitation. As you are increasing more number of tests, your average value will be better. No? Average value will be better, and your confidence level uh, to predict the stress at point will be more. So there is a limitation of the minimum value and no limitation for the maximum value. But as I told you in earlier classes that as the uh, uh, the number of tests will increase, uh, it will add uh, cost to to the company, uh, cost uh, labor, uh, laboring labor. It will time consuming also, and uh, and uh, like that. No, uh, so. Uh, so it is time consuming, labor intensive and costing. So these uh, these things is going to be there. So we have to optimize uh, or we have to control how many tests is going to give you a better result. So maybe uh, apart from three, you can add uh, uh, two, two, three more tests. So, and that is good enough. You cannot go for infinite number of tests, right? So, uh, so this is what about uh, this flat jack technique. Yesterday, I had asked for more questions regarding uh, uh, the, 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 the limitation with respect to when we are uh, testing right at the surface of uh, the tunnel wall or maybe the wall of uh, a high rise building. No? So these limitations uh, is very important to discuss for today. Um, I was trying to. OK, so uh, just uh, uh, I will. I will try to show you one photograph. I'm just taking it from somewhere in my, just quickly, I will get you one photograph. That will be easy. Uh, uh, in the first class itself, in introductory class itself, I was talking about stresses around uh, uh, opening, right? Uh, some of you might be remember that uh, when we are creating a opening, how underground opening, how the stresses will vary uh, uh, below the earth, right? So in that situation, uh, the same thing is happening in our case also, that um, uh, once we are uh, going below the surface, when we are doing this uh, opening, uh, maybe uh, uh, below the surface, we'll find out that uh, there, there will be a variation of the stress uh, below the surface. Right? So I have a slide. I can just uh, oh, I'm copying from some other slide, and I'm trying to attach here um, so that I can tell you something. Now you can see this slide, right? 
if I'm going below the surface, uh, if you are going below the surface, uh, so we are making an opening, something like that. It can be a square shape. It can be a circular shape. You can assume to be a, uh, a tunnel also, right? So once we are, so uh, if there is no, if there is no opening at, at all, if there is no opening at all, what will be the stress at all the points? It will be uniformly distributed all along the, um, all, all along the top of the surface. Now, if, I, if I'm talking about the vertical stress, the vertical stress will be same. Uh, the vertical stress will be same all along the surfaces, right? But when we are talking about uh, uh, this opening, once this opening will come into picture, the stress distribution will be different. Uh, the stress distribution, the stress at uh, that particular locations is going to change. And how much it is going to change, this is what the question is. How much it is going to change? So whenever we are, so yesterday uh, in our introductory classes, I was talking about the in-situ stress and induced stress. Na? So as soon as we are making an opening, uh, the stress uh, around the opening is going to change. Okay. So I'm uh, I'm showing you another photograph, uh, which will tell you about how the stress are being uh, developed. Uh, photograph. Yeah. So I think I have this. I got it. I, this is for what I was trying to show you. Uh, just wait. Just trying to show you. I should get a correct photograph. So, okay, let us let us talk about this. Or maybe I have to take this. Now, if okay, I am talking about. Uh, do not see the uh, the two photographs. It will be confusing at this point of time. So just look at a photograph which is on the left hand side, right? So this figure is showing you a tunnel. Okay, this figure is showing you a tunnel of uh, diameter two meter, right? Two meter diameter tunnel is there. And uh, I'm trying to find out once uh, at this point, at this location, at uh, the side of the tunnel, if I'm trying to see how the stress is varying. So if no tunnel will be created, the stress will be something like this dotted line. All along this uh, uh, line from this point one to this five, it will be same. Because it will be rosy edge. No, it will not uh, change uh, as we are going away from uh, one point to the another point. So when we are talking about the vertical stress, it will be same on a particular depth. On a particular depth, it will be same. So if I want to plot a uh, curve, it will be a straight line. Right? So as soon as we are creating an opening in that particular horizon, horizon which is at a depth of some 100 or 200 meter below, or maybe uh, one kilometer below the surface, the stress is going to change. The stress at this point is going to change. And we are uh, representing this stress in a polar coordinate system now. So, so one of the stress is known as the radial stress. Another stress is known as the tangential stress. So the radial stress, you can see, it becomes twice of the uh, the the uh, in situ stress. Hmm. This is your in situ stress. This black dotted is your in situ stress. OK. And uh, uh, so it becomes uh, more than the in situ stress value. And this stress. So, so there we had talked about two types of stresses. One was the in-situ stress, another was the induced stress. And this is what the example of induced stress is there. So before excavation, the stress is equal to your in-situ stress value. No, uh, so, so as soon as you are creating a excavation, the stress field has changed. And uh, you will find that uh, at the side of the opening, maybe from uh, uh, at the peri uh, circumference of the opening, maybe 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 meter below, or half a meter, half a meter uh, inside the intact rock, you'll find the stress is very, very high comparison to the in situ value. One of them, sigma theta theta. 
is very very high it is twice in a particular condition it can be more than twice also no? here i am trying to show you one of the example in which it it becomes twice the in situ value so this is what i am trying to say that once we are doing all this flat jack test on the boundary if i am making a uh, a, a slot uh, what we did in uh, flat jack test uh, we in the flat jack test uh, what we have done i can add a, a, a small slot here itself and that will make you clear if i am making a, a stress at this uh, slot at this location although the scale wise it is very high but uh, it is for your understanding so if i am making a slot at this point and i am applying uh, the cancellation pressure as we have seen earlier right okay this is the stress which is acting and now on the other opposite side this stress is acting what is that stress you just give me the uh, uh you just tell me what is that stress this stress is nothing but it is the induced stress not the in situ stress if i have already created a uh, what is called a, uh, a excavation if i have already created a excavation then if i am measuring this stresses just at the periphery of the opening of this opening if i am making any sort of uh, activities or measurement just uh, at the surface of uh, Uh, by creating a slot so what does it mean it, it it is measuring your induced stress it is not the in situ stress okay so this is the so this is the limitation we are not interested in uh, the effect of this one uh, the opening we are trying to find out what is the in situ stress if i am trying to find out the in situ stress this slot if i am cutting right at the surface it is not going to give you the actual value of in situ stress but if i am keeping this slot or a point of measurement away from this opening far away from this opening you can see it is very very close to the in situ stress value once it is very far away from this point definitely it is going to give you the uh, in situ stress value and we have realized this aspect that once we are measuring a stress right at the surface is not going to uh, to fulfill your objective your objective here is to find out the in situ stress so i am not able to find out the dotted stress no that is your in situ stress but i am able to find out the value of either sigma theta theta or i am trying to find out the value of sigma rr hmm, the radial stress or the tangential stress but i am not able to find out the value of uh, see, uh, the in situ stress okay so that's why it is always uh, so th this is what the limitation of this method is this is what the limitation of this method is and uh, the people have developed other methods also so that we can measure it we can measure the stresses away from the opening maybe some uh, uh, 20 meters 30 meter uh, 50 meter 100 meter maybe 1000 meters uh, 2000 meters below the surface so, so such method have been developed with us and uh, we are going to discuss those methods and uh, and also in those methods you will find that the people have uh, not only uh, tried to uh, improve um, uh, the the confidence to get this in situ stress value but also they have tried to find out uh, cut down the number of tests so that it will be true a stress at a point not uh, maybe one or two meter here and there so we have the methods that we can find out with the one point itself we can uh, do the instrumentation uh, we can find out the all the nine uh, all the six stress tests uh, the components of this stress test right so only one test is good enough okay so uh, i think this is uh, all for today's class and uh, this way we are uh, finishing our the flat jack uh, technique and uh, uh, possibly in next week uh, will i think uh, for today's this week uh, our class is over so i will send you some of the uh, assignment problem on the flat jack itself uh, so that you can solve it and uh, you can submit your assignment and you can use your weekend time to uh, complete it right so this is all for this flat jack technique and uh, next class uh, i just give you some brief and already the material is already shared with you uh, we have the other methods are there that is called uh, so this technique is uh, uh, completed that was uh, a flat jack technique uh, 
this is a uh, these are the three isrm uh, suggested method and this flat jack techniques was a suggested method by isrm a international body which is uh, looking after the development of the rock mechanics that is called international society of rock mechanics and they have accepted this flat jack as a suggested method in 1987 right so uh, since so so since then uh, we have the latest one is uh, hydraulic fracturing technique and this is a very good one uh, you'll love to um, have a discussion with other very um, uh, technique wise and the, uh, the the techniques people are using to find out uh, these stresses is very also interesting and possibly you my you will feel good to get this flat jack also the way uh, this method was conceived and it was developed um, uh, that was uh, good and uh, because because of its simplicity and uh, ease to measurement is the one of the plus point with this flat jack technique and other methods are not as simple as this flat jack is so this is making this flat jack techniques a very uh, acceptable method even though some limitations are there but you will get some data out of that na so other next class possibly we will take uh, some overcoring techniques and i will upload a video of overcoring technique you can uh, see this video again and again and possibly if you can uh, uh, search a google also you will find some of videos one video i am going to upload it and possibly go through that um, and uh, next class next week i think we will complete this overcoding techniques okay so that is all for today if you if you have any quick questions you can uh, ask me otherwise uh, you can stop at this point any so question so some of us are uh, yeah so so some of us are confused whether the deadline of the first quiz was 9 am today or 9 pm today no it is 9 am already it was written in the document okay. uh, that it is 9 am so please do not get confused so the the question was very very simple so i i was not willing to give you a wider uh, scope just uh, after the class you have a thought whatever the thought process have generated to you and uh, you have to submit accordingly so such type of small small quizzes will be there so that uh, whatever you you are able to understand from the class that you can uh, answer it uh, quickly rather than spending a lot of time uh, so uh, uh, I, i have already completed the assignment but due to classes since morning I, by thinking the time is 9 pm we didn't submit it sir now how you have thought that it is 9 pm because it I, is I, written sir during due, due time to 9 pm uh, in the 24 hour form sir, lot given lot that the submit is sir due time is 2100 hours so so we thought okay, it is okay. 9 pm okay okay so what you will do if you have not submitted then uh, uh, today again i am going to upload one more assignment so you can add uh, your assignment together and submit right and possibly you have got Thank a better you. answer through our discussion today itself and uh, uh, so i think you can improve your answer now okay and add it maybe i'll give you a longer time of uh, maybe by weekend you can submit all these things 